Wow, I can't believe Welcome this. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Sherry, your host of Health Fitness Broadcast, bringing you the latest uh, health issues and the hottest fit fitness topics. Uh, today, my guest is bodybuilding legend, Mr. Bill Grant, Mr. World, Mr. America, and he's here to share his health recovery story with us. Bill, welcome back to the show. Nice to be back on the show, Sherry. Yes, uh, I do have a little bevy of information uh, of what my last uh, three years were, were like. Uh, the, the first three year, the first two years weren't as bad, but I, there was something going on, I felt, and I just couldn't, couldn't really get it together. I'd get sick of when I eat certain things, and it just progressively got worse until last year it was really really bad well let's see let's see 2012 that's when it was getting bad i actually had to get my gallbladder out we thought that was the major problem i had multiple problems the uh the gastroenterologist told me and i was a little bit nervous i really was um i mean doing what i was doing uh, i figured i'd be okay but i i have to <clears throat> be honest i Back in the day, we ate a lot of junk stuff, and it, I think it caught up to us. Uh, I had a very fast metabolism. I could tell you I consumed a lot of McDonald's, a lot of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and a lot of other fried chicken and fried foods. And you know, I, I just figured being have a, uh, having a real fast metabolism, it really wouldn't matter. But uh, it did matter. Uh, being young, my body was able to metabolize it, but it, but I think it all just metastasized into the stomach, into my my uh, colon and it just got bad and like I said the first thing that was really getting bad was my gallbladder so uh, I went to several doctors I, I was in the emergency room several times I'll tell you about that but uh, I started going to a doctor and he started looking at me again he was telling me about the multiple things then it got so bad no matter what I was eating or whatever it started come back coming back up again so they decided to take my gallbladder out at the insistence of from my son's uh, father-in-law, father who was a doctor in Finland, and uh, he couldn't understand why they were taking so long to actually figure this out. He's a pretty prominent uh, doctor in Finland. And uh, he contacted the doctor several times, and I think that's that communication really kind of got them going. And again, that, I said, was the first thing was the gallbladder. They took it out. And we actually thought that was gonna, gonna cure everything that was going on, but Lo and behold, no, it wasn't. It was really bad, and it started getting worse and worse and worse. <clears throat> and January of last year was really bad, and I had taken a trip down to Florida. My son took, uh, flew me down there because he had the family there on the Christmas uh, holidays, so he asked me to come down. And uh, when I went down there, basically, I really didn't have many problems. But uh, about two weeks after I came back, and I'm really, really happy that I came here, it really uh, came to a head. I mean, that year, that particular year, I had been to the uh, emergency room about 65 times. That's a lot of times to be in the emergency wow. Sometimes twice a day. It was really bad. I mean, they, they got to know who I was, you know, coming to the emergency room. I, the last, when it got closer and closer, I had to start calling an ambulance to come pick me up because I just couldn't drive anymore. Most of the time, I would just drive myself to the you know to the emergency room but i mean it just wasn't working they were they were giving me all these kinds of things and it kind of calmed it down a little but when i get back home again five six hours later the same process starts i mean i could drink water and start throwing up i mean there was nothing i could eat i had lost 40 pounds in about three months that's basically when my uh son's father-in-law really got involved it, it was really bad i went from about oh 180 to about 140 pounds. It was really scary. Wow, that's, that's I, I was absolutely uh, worried about it. And, uh, I was getting even more, more scared because the weight kept going down. And I said, there's something a little bit more that's going on. And uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I was really, really, I was panicking in all honesty. I mean, I'm supposed to be the man of steel, but uh, right, <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was the man of weak now. And uh, it made me realize how you know, fleeting it could be, your life. I mean, it's, it, you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, one day you're healthy, you're strong, and everything's okay. And then the next day, it's like all hell breaks loose. So uh, during that time in January, I came back 
I'll get back to that part. I came back. My my nephew happened to be here with me, be here with me in the apartment, and I started getting really sick, and my stomach was really starting to bother me. And at one point, my pancreas was starting to get bad. They they told me I was getting pancreatitis. That's what really started to scare me because, as you know, with most people, if their pancreas goes down, you're done. You're you're not going to make it. And so that was starting to give me a lot of problems, and I was getting really pains this this particular night. And there were pains that I wasn't really used to. And my my nephew says, Uncle Bill, you want me to take you to the hospital? I says, nah, it's just a little bit more painful than usual. This was about 1 o'clock in the morning. And he left. And when he, after he left, it got worse. I mean, it got so worse, I was on the floor crawling around. Then I really was, like, terrified. I, I, I just picked myself up and said, I feel like I'm dying at this point, And I got to get to the hospital. So I got in the car. And I was, it was like a little after one in the morning, so there's not much traffic, but I'm just speeding to the hospital, which is only like 10 minutes from me. And I'm hoping a police car pulls me over so I can get some, get to the hospital. But I finally got there. And uh, so happened my, uh, the doctor who was actually working on me, this, this guy was really, really good. He's the head of the uh, organ transplants at, at, at um, oh, St. Barnabas Hospital in Livingston. And he was taking care of me. The guy is really good. He has a lot of people that come from all over different countries to, to, you know, learn with this guy. Well, he was there and they took me in the room. He checked me out and he says, uh, you know, I took an x-ray. He said, the x-ray is not enough. He says, there's something else going on. He says, I actually think you have a perforated colon. And I said, what? He says, yeah, so we got, we got to get you to, to drink this fluid. You know, sometimes they give you this fluid to drink so they can see the insides with, with an x-ray. So I, I took that and uh, I came back again and he uh, it kind of confirmed. He says, you got to go to surgery now. It's like, wow. So they, wow. they, they soup me up and take me in. And hours later, you know, uh, I got, came back again and I was in the bed. You know, when people wake up from anesthesia, a lot of times they get really, you know, you don't know where you're at. Well, I'm like fighting, like five people got to hold me down. I'm, I'm, I'm screaming out. We got tubes all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. had never, ever been, you know, done to me. And uh, the only time I was in the hospital, I remember I was a kid for two hernias. One when I was eight years old and I had another one when I was 17. That was the only time I really had any time in the hospital, any type of surgery. But uh, when I woke up, I had 18 staples on my stomach. Matter of fact, if it's too gory, I mean, I'm going to show you the show people exactly what could actually happen. Somebody has great abs. You see that? Wow. So you can see it. You know. What, you did think, your, what did your family think? Now, because your nephew left, you got yourself to the hospital after things got worse. Um, what did they think when you called your, I, I, your family? I, I, saying they had, to, they had to call them when I was in the hospital. They were like bugging out because I was basically about 10 hours away. You know what happens when you when your colon is perforated, you get what they call septicema. And Jerry is the one who really hit me on all this. He says, wow, he said, it's good good thing you went as soon as you did, because after a certain point, they can't save you. It starts shutting down your, your, your organs one by one. Your heart is the last thing to stop. You to just find you dead on the floor. But uh, I, I'm glad I got there. It was something that told me. And I, and I told the doctor, I says, you know, I really feel like I was going to die. And he says, in about 10 more hours, you, you would have been dead. Wow. So. Close. Too close, right? Too close to call. <laughs> too too, too wow. close to call it. So I mean, what was the recovery like? I mean, were you in the hospital for a long period of time? Uh, I was in the hospital, I think, for about 15 days. But, I mean, I had to go real slow. I mean, like I said, I had all these tubes going out all over the I mean, the catheters is like, oh, man, that, um, tubes up my nose and down my throat. And it's like. It was pretty rough. I mean, you, you, you lay there and you, you just try and put everything in perspective about what just happened. You know, it's like 50 years of training and this is where you end up. And I, you right. know, you so I want to mention now, you're first, you've been um, in the bodybuilding world in training since, well, 1972. Was that your first contest? Uh, my very first contest was the Mr. High School in New Jersey in 1964. 1964, <laughs> that okay. The, and that's the, in North Jersey, right? You're still in East yeah, Orange? Yes, so North Jersey. And the first big title I won 
I won the Miss New Jersey. And then the real big one was the Mr. America in 1971. That was the WBBG uh, show. Uh, Lou Ferrigno was in that show. I happened to beat him. And uh, as things turned out, we both went to London together to compete in the Mr. Universe. And uh, he beat me in that one. And it was a strange story about that one. You know, if you've been, ever been to London and you've seen the hotels, especially back in the 70s, the, the rooms were like, God knows what. I mean, it's like a prison cell. And so Louie and I had to be in the same room. Now, you know how big Louie is. These rooms were really, really narrow. We had to pull the, the, the mattress off the floor to put side the other bed in and it curled up the side of the wall. That's how wide the room was. So I, I gave... Louis, the big uh, box spring, because he was bigger, and I slept on the floor. The next morning we got out, I think we had, we had uh, powdered eggs. It was the nastiest food. I mean, I love London, and I love England, British, but the food, is, it was absolutely horrible. So that, that, that was one of the good uh, contests, but 1974 was the real big one. That's when I won the uh, Mr. World competition at Madison Square Garden. That was, uh, that was, some, that was some show, 5,000 people there. Uh, it was a Gold's Gym Suite. Arnold won the Olympia. I won the Mr. World. Bob Birdsong won the Mr. America. So it was, and I won all the body parts: best back, best chest, best arms, best hands, most muscular. <laughs> <laughs> and my legs weren't the greatest; they were pretty good. I almost won best legs too. So it was it was a pretty good outing. And uh, to go from there, the transition to what happened 50 years ago is a whole right. big thing to adjust to. I mean, here's yeah. a guy who has been great shape all his life, never really been ill, watching other people get sick, feel, figuring like, I'm doing everything right, and uh, I'll never end up in the hospital. Right. Well, I want to tell everybody, you, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anything can happen at any time, and uh, this is really like a, a wake-up call. Uh, you just have to really enjoy every day, because mm -hmm. one day could be your last. Now, Bill, I appreciate your honesty um, in saying back in the day, Although you were a professional bodybuilder, you still ate your junk food. You still ate your, your fast food. Um, well, t today now, I, I really, in the last year, I really, really cut back. I eat at Trader Joe's now. Yeah. I, I just <laughs> make it all organic foods, right. foods that don't have a uh, grass-fed feed uh, food, uh, chicken. I haven't even eaten a lot of meat in a long time just fish and chicken and turkey that's about all i'm uh, uh dieting on and uh, nice uh, so I, what um tips can you give or advice can you give to those um competitive bodybuilders just starting out and you know with the nutrition of course they're when they're competing and training they're eating right but um for that fast food that junk stuff that may come back to haunt you yeah, you're absolutely right. It can come back to haunt you. I mean, I'm not saying you have to eat perfect every day. Right. But I think you really basically 80% of the time you really need to be watching what you're eating. Of course, we're all young at one point, and we all think nothing, we're, nothing can touch we're higher. Anything. Yeah, nothing's going to happen, you know. Right. You know, you see older people and you always run in front of cars and stuff. Think like nothing can happen, but... Anything can happen, but the thing is, is to take the preventative message, uh, message right now. Mm -hmm. Try and stay away from all the junk. And, uh, you know, a lot of the things that are, guys are doing this year, you know, in this new age, I mean, I'm not trying to say, like, I'm an angel and none of us guys back in the day. Um, I, I really think the guys really need to cut back on the, their, their steroid usage. Uh, I really think it's having a big, big impact on what's happening to a lot of the younger guys today. And you really hate to see this. And we did it back in the day, but I, I think we had a little bit bigger handle on it. We didn't do it constantly, basically before shows we were doing it, but it's, it's a real big thing now. The guys are really huge. I mean, and I love bodybuilding. I mean, I just love guys working out, but I mean, you really have to start thinking 10, 20, 30 years down the line. I mean, it's great now. And it was all great for me, but you never know what the future is going to bring. I mean, your body's going to age. Your body is not going to stay like this forever. So you have to take measures to try and make sure and shore it up. So by the time you get older and things start breaking down, it's, it's like a car. I always try to, to, to like the body like a car. If you don't tune up the car, you don't change the oil, what happens? The engine goes. Hey, if you don't change the tires, you get flat tires. 
you know, you got to keep the antifreeze in. That means you got to rehydrate yourself all the time. A car has to be rehydrated constantly. If you don't rehydrate a car, it overheats. It's we work. We work just like a car. Yeah. You know, it, you got to tune it up. You got to you got you to gotta work on it. And you got to put the right fuel in it. You can't take a Maserati and put regular gas in it. What's going to happen? It's going to sputter. It's the same thing with the with the food here. This is this is our our fuel, and we we need high test fuel. Look what we're doing. We're racing cars. You know, we we got to be tuned up constantly, and we don't want that car breaking down a lot. And if it breaks down, you want to be able be able to fix it right away. So my advice to people is just you know go slow. Watch what you're doing. Nobody's perfect. Nobody says you can't have fast food or junk food, but don't eat it in abundance. Try and stay with a healthy diet. I mean, this is, I'm surprised I'm even talking about it today. I mean, because I used to just eat what I wanted, but now circumstances has told me that, Bill, if you want to continue, and it's all about longevity, I keep telling these guys, it's all about longevity. It's how long you're going to live. It's great. Athletes, it's great. I mean, but we being athletes, we should be living longer than anybody. Right. It seems like sometimes we're dying faster. What, what could it be? I think it's what we're putting in our bodies. Right. The outside, the exterior looks great. But what does the interior look like? Yeah. I mean, I had a good picture of what the interior looked like. So uh, um, let me ask you this. Since your recovery, how long has it been since you, you're feeling close to 100 percent? Well, now it's been over a year. It really has. It was it what? was like the end of January of last year. So I'm just really getting back again. It took almost almost a year to recover. I started working out again about in November. Okay, that was my end of question. October. What but is your I, exercise um, regimen like now? It's really really uh, different than what I did before. Matter of fact, I never used to do aerobics, and that is now I'm learning. And in this business or any business, you continue to learn. If you think you know everything, you might as well just throw the dirt over yourself. You're always, at 52 years of doing this, I still am learning new things. And I'm actually learning now more about aerobic activity. I do aerobics every time I work out. I'm training now three times a week. I do the bike first for 25 minutes, and I do a 30 to 40 minute workout. And when I do that workout, it's nonstop. I mean, I go from one exercise to the other, but got to understand, I go from anywhere from 20 to 50 reps on each exercise. It's an aerobic workout, but I can tell you right now, it's preserving my joints. Now, we have, to, we have to understand this part. As we get older, our joints aren't as flexible and aren't as strong as they were before. So you want to continue to exercise, but you don't need all that weight. I mean, you, you, you're trying to get the blood into the muscle. You're trying to pump up muscle and build muscle. I mean, it's the look. It, it, we, we look like we can bench press 500, but maybe we can't, but it's, does it really matter? Right. The idea is you want to be healthy. Right. I feel a lot better today than I did 10 years ago. It's absolutely incredible the way I'm training now. That bike, that, that aerobic stuff, it really, 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 it, it just tunes your body up. It, it really gets, it gets your metabolism going, getting your body to absorb all the nutrients you need, cardio, your, your cardiovascular system, you really need that part, and today I'm glad I'm I'm doing that uh that riding that bike. I train each body part twice a twice a week, and my workout is like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. On Monday I'll do upper body. On Wednesday I'll do legs. Then on Friday I'll do a whole body workout. But I may might only do one set for exercise, but that one set will consist of 50 repetitions. Do you hear what I'm saying? 50 repetitions. Everybody says, oh, that's just too lightweight. Well, I challenge anybody out there. Do a set, 50 reps, and tell me how you think, how you feel when it's all done. You will be so pumped, so there gorged. Go. There's the challenge. And yeah. you can contact Bill and let him know that you're doing it. Um, I want to put in the description box your website, billgrant.net. Right. And uh, they can contact you and, and let you know that they're doing that challenge. That or they can they there. can call, they can contact me on my Bill Grant fan fan page fan page as well on uh, on, Facebook. on Facebook. But uh, yes, this 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 whole new scheme of training 
just really makes me feel good. Matter of fact, I'll show you guys out there. I mean, I told you I lost 40 pounds, but in the words of the Terminator, I told everybody, I'll be back. <laughs> and, and there it is. Those are those <laughs> biceps. And there it is. <laughs> That's it. That's from that hard work. It, it all came back. 40 pounds, I was devastated. I was totally devastated. Mm -hmm. Looking at the mirror every day and looking what I was looking at right there, but I was thinking about and looking, God, I looked a lot better, a lot better. It was very depressing. I sat home day after day, and that's all you think about. You think about your life, what the things you should have done and the things you, you mm -hmm. should be doing. I mean, you got a lot of soul searching to do when you when you get something like this because you just you can't do anything else. You're just sitting here thinking about it, and it's like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? I wouldn't have this. But guess what? It's why didn't? Why didn't? Why you didn't? So now you're here. You can do it. Yeah, great. Thanks for sharing so, your story. This is really good because a lot uh, of people um, idolize you and your training systems. Uh, your nutrition uh, company and um, the Bill Grant Classic um, that you've had, and uh, so any one of those in the future. Well, I wanted to, wanted to do the <clears throat> Bill Grant Classic again. I just have to work that out again with the NPC when I got sick. <clears throat> I really couldn't do any shows, and you know this this is my passion, and not to be able to do this. <clears throat> I'm a personal trainer in New York, in Jersey. And for me not to be able, <clears throat> excuse me, not, not to be able to do what I love to do, it's, it's really heartbreaking. I mean, for over a year, I mean, I just kept thinking and thinking. And the mind is a powerful thing. I got to get back. I'm going to get back. I will make it. And <clears throat> just every day was just another day. And like anything else, you, you, you got to go one day at a time. You really can't project that I was trying to do that oh, maybe another month or two, I'll be ready. And the doctor says, don't think about it. And I says, wow. But he did tell me I would have a, com a complete, you know, uh, recovery. He was really right about that. And uh, he said, it actually being the shape I was in kind of saved my life because basically about 50% of the guys my age that have this real bad problem, they don't make it. I mean, if people have to understand what they do with a surgery like this, they cut you down, they gut you like a fish, they take your intestines out, and you have to put it on the table to find out what's going on, to find the hole. Then they have to put it back again the same way they took it out. I mean, it's real touch and go. There's, I've heard some real horror stories from nurses and doctors. They put it in wrong, they twist the colon, and they won't go back in and fix it. It's a dangerous operation. This is, this is not an operation they, they like to do. It's really... It's bad. I mean, you're 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 laying there with totally open, and with and they have to, to look at to look at the other organs. Well, at least this this doctor did. He said I checked every one of your organs first before I closed you up to make sure I didn't have to do anything else. Because once we close you up, it's more than a chance they're not going to come back and do it again. So they they did a great thing, and uh, I just think you got to try and take care of your health the best you can. You need to look up on. Uh, Nutrition. Matter of fact, I've been taking a lot of different supplements, uh, a lot of herbal products, uh, products like maca, kuna, uh, reishi. These things help your blood pressure, your skin, your kidneys. Um, it, it, it gives you more strength, helps uh, burn body fat. It, this stuff is really, really good. I mean, I, I take protein, the whey protein, but now I take protein at that uh, has no uh, GMOs in it. It's grass-fed cows. So you, you kind of get a little bit more aware of what's happening when you, when you get sick, especially when it's life-threatening. I mean, I hate to even look at it and talk at a life-threatening thing it was, but this was a, a life-and-death situation I was in. And uh, I, I guess I'm not finished yet. Um, I'm, I've been blessed, and uh, it's been great. You have a lot more time to influence all of those people that uh, look up to you and respect not only your career, but your education and what you do share with everyone to help them uh, meet well, their goals and to stay as healthy as possible. Well, I want everybody to, you know, do what they got to do. 
Uh, exercise is a wonderful thing. I mean, again, it's again, it's <clears throat> all about the longevity. Uh, it's great to train for shows like I did. I never thought at this point in time that I would be thinking in another direction. But yes, it is. You sometimes you have to try, you know, change directions if you're going to continue. I mean, I love bodybuilding. Uh, I can still do it now. I'm, I'm not doing it in the same way I did before. I'm not interested in competing. I mean, I'm past that point. I think I. I've done what I wanted to do, but uh, now it's now to work on helping other people get in shape. And there's a lot of people out there that want to work out, want to get in shape, but they don't really have the means and the ways to do it. And uh, this is why I'm a personal trainer. It's like somebody wanting to be a doctor. They want to help people get better. And uh, it's the same thing with uh, bodybuilding. But again, I hope people will just kind of look and see what has happened to me. Uh, things can happen to you no matter how healthy you think you are something can happen you you just can't you can look in the mirror every day for the outside but you can't see the inside constantly you have to constantly get checked up by a doctor no how no matter how healthy you think you might be you still need to go to the doctor every so often and get checked get checkups it's mm -hmm. it's very important right and just, and i i think that everyone will agree that men more so than women put that doctor visit off as long as possible and no. now, did you do that? Because you said you suffered for a long time. So it was like, it'll go away. I'll get through this. You know, it will. Yeah. So classic, how, long did it, how long did it take before you went into the doctor saying, okay, this won't go away. Something, something. Well, my, wrong. my sister kept uh, prodding me to go to the doctor. I hated going to the doctor. I said, I'll be all right. I can get through this. She says, you need to go to the doctor. You can't keep throwing up like this and not be, you know, it not being, you know, you're not healthy. There's something going on. You know, I, I think most of us just don't want to hear anything bad. We go to a doctor and we just don't want to hear you're ill or you need a, you need surgery or we need to do this. We just, as human beings, don't want to hear that. We want to think that it's something that we have that we can go, you know, go away on its own. And there's some things that just aren't going to go away on its own. It's like mine. I thought it would actually go away. And then I started going to the doctors and I really didn't like they were taking but they would tell me when doctors said you can't really work out anymore. I says, why? He says, you've got real bad, bad problems. I've had, uh, oh, gastritis, um, the gallbladder going on. Uh, what else did I have? I had something else going on too. But uh, these were multiple things that were happening to me. And I, what your digestive system is really the most important part, you know, you can take. And I take a lot of those probiotics, and I'm really a big proponent of taking these probiotics. I take about 40 to 50 billion uh, organisms a day. It's, they're, they're really great. It's really helped my digestive system. It works better than it did 10 years ago. And the doctor told me, he says, once we fix this, you'll go right back and probably be better than it was before. I just had a bad colon and my whole system was just bad. And it was just a buildup. I mean, at one point I was eating... Um, <laughs> Popeye's chicken every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now you you can only imagine what they're you're frying this stuff in, and how often they even act they change the grease. How often do they do it? And it's like, can you? And even when I was having the problem, I was still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and I I'd go home and blah, blah, blah. wow, at least it was good. <laughs> I mean, it was really good. Well, I it just, lasted, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought it just go away again, but uh. You know, if you're listening to this, uh, it, it was madness. I mean, it took that to happen, say, no more. Yeah. You know, when people have conditions or someone who smokes a lot and gets cancer, all it took, to, and they survive, but it said that's what it took to make me stop. Yeah. Sometimes you, you need drastic measures. Some, some of us are a little bit more hard-headed, you know, and stubborn. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and I was that way. I just kept eating it. My sisters would stop eating all this junk you're eating. I said, but it's great. I can't. I don't get fat. She says, yeah, but it's good. you're going to get sick from all this stuff. Yeah, she was right. Well, I yeah. um, I just want to say again, thanks for sharing your story because um, there's going to be a lot of people that are able to view this and make those changes, whether big or small, uh, according to how um, how they're feeling, how urgent. So if it's uh, yeah, if they're not feeling so good, maybe they'll make a drastic change uh, or if they're on the right track maybe they'll stay on that right track even longer so exactly. I appreciate uh, your story and look forward to our next interview and I want to um, 
ask everyone if you like this information, share it with a friend um, on YouTube, share it and uh, subscribe, please. So thanks again, Bill, and his information will be in the description box, his website, so you can contact him and let him know you're doing those 50 reps. Right, so right, right. I'd also like to promote promote it on my site. If you let me know, I'll mm -hmm. promote let let people know when it's going to be on. Absolutely. And so everybody out there to get an will get an opportunity to to see it. Like I told on Facebook, it was quite a while. I it wasn't there, but mm -hmm. this is the reason why I was there. I mean, Bill was on his deathbed. It was like wow, but I'm but I'm back. But you're I'm back. Back. <laughs> you're now. back. Tara's <laughs> back. All right. Yes. Thank you. There it is. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you too. You take care and have a great day.